Hey everyone, we've got a great product for you today. Our programmer debugger adapter. Okay. If you've done embedded systems development, if you're doing your own products, not necessarily just on a dev board, you've probably got a programmer like this that you attach into that target and that gives you all of your programming and debugging interface. Right? All of our industry designs we've done, you end up with something like this. You don't build that on board. Uh, it's just too expensive to put that programmer on board uh, of every device. Now, over the years, we've come up with a solution that allows us to not only connect with various different ways into our target boards, but also brings out certain other signals that we need all the time. What am I going to say? Of course, UARTs, right? You always need a UART uh, connection on there. So this little guy here is the evolution of actually almost seven years, not that it's that complicated, but just over all the de designs, we've always added something. So this guy allows us to not only take either an MSP430 or an ARM programmer uh, in one package here, attach it in, but it gives us three different options to uh, attach into our target boards and also features a dual UART uh, that comes out of the board that we can tap into and look at our on our PC. So let's check this out a bit more closely. So there's a lot to explain on this board. It is really, we just love this thing. Uh, like I said, it has been evolving for years and years, so it's pretty much got everything we could ever want on it. So J-Link or ARM, uh, sorry, J-Link ARM and MSP430 box connectors. So you can attach either of your programmers there. Um, they're the two processors that we use all the time uh, for different applications. This section here is your dual UART, so it's very much like our dual port uh, sniffer, except a little less versatile because it's connected directly into the connectors here. Um, but still, you've got two channels uh, with FTDDI uh, chipsets uh, that give you instant um, USB to our or UART level conversion. So you can, we've got those tied into the different connectors that we have broken out here. So on your target, uh, not only do you bring in your programming and, and debugger, uh, but you've also got other debugging uh, capabilities that come out right away uh, and immediate access to those through here. Uh, there's a note in the data sheet about disconnecting the transmit lines. So again, if you do want to connect into a device and just monitor those lines, these jumpers can be pulled off uh, for the transmit lines from here down to your target and then you won't be driving those lines. So that's handy there. Okay. Down here are your three target uh, connecting types. So we've got sort of our proprietary derived a uh, 14 pin connector that we use for all of our uh, customer devices and things that we do. Here is a tag connect. Uh, if you've never seen a tag connect cable, that's this guy here. Uh, it's called a plug of nails connector. So it's got a 10 pin adapter on one side and that's what connects into there. And then you've got a plug of nails style connector on there. I'll show you how to use that in just a second, but really, really great devices, uh, especially for production where you don't wanna have the cost of a connector, but you still want a uh, somewhat permanent and robust connection. And then here is just a USB-A. So this is a, we've repurposed this connector. So this is not, this does not magically transmit or transfer a J-Link or anything into USB. All we're doing is hacking this connector to use the two data lines as the SWD programming lines, which are just a clock and data line uh, for two wire programming and debugging into ARM devices. So that's the three connection options. You've also got other jumpers here. So these two here are for power selection. So if you want to power your target board, which sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, you can select five volt, which comes from either the USB or the J-Link. So whatever happens to be plugged in. Uh, you've got that available and then you've got there's a regulator on here so you've got 3.3 volts available as well so you can select that and of course those are the two most common uh, target voltage that, the, that you're going to come across so uh, having those options are, are really excellent uh, the third jumper here is for to emulate the voltage sensing line. So if you use this USB connector uh, into your target, uh, what's missing is a fifth line that would tell the programming device that there is power present on the target. So we just emulate that. We just feedback from our supply uh, with that connector so you'd, or that uh, adapter. So you'd stick on your, your jumper like so if you were using this device and that would allow you to connect properly uh, into an ARM uh, based programmer. Okay. Otherwise, if you don't have that there, it'll say that there's no uh, target voltage. So we've thought of that as well. 
This last jumper here is just to disconnect this reset button. So sometimes if you, this might load onto your reset circuit um, that you may or may not want. So we just provided that. That's sort of one special case that we came across once. So that got into the design. Um, but otherwise you've got that reset button available. So on a, a small device or something that you maybe have this connected to that's hard to reach a reset line or that doesn't have a, a reset button, this enables you to have that on there. So it's a bit nicer uh, for your target as well. Uh, so let's look at the other, the different connectors. So we'll start with this proprietary connector. Uh, in your kit comes with a connector like this. This, you'll notice on the bottom, has uh, holes as well. So you can take the long end of this connector and plug it through here. And that actually clips into this side. So this is the kind of the least expensive way to connect this into a target. And I brought a, an example uh, device. This is for one of our customers that we use and you can see we've got our, our programming header on there. So with that in place I can simply plug that into the board. Of course you're going to note your pin ones and then I might as well power this up too. Like so. So that would be your uh, your programming environment there. You want to make sure that you're not torquing this and set this up in a, in a nicer way so that you don't torque that um, and you're ready to go, as simple as that. The other way to use this connector is with a ribbon cable. And these guys are a tad expensive, so we don't, they're, they're pretty specialized, so we don't um, put that into the, the kit, but you can grab these from Samtech. So you could put in, you can get them in various different configurations and simply attach them in on the top side of that connector, like so making sure that all your polarities are correct, right? So that's one option. With this type of connection, you've got all of your, your full JTAG programming lines, six lines or whatever, uh, whatever the case is, and you've got both UARTs. So this target board in particular has uh, a debug connection to the processor, but it also monitors this Wi-Fi module. So this communication UART from here to there we bring that out as well. So not only can we monitor it, so in that case we have to take off this line, this jumper here, so we're not loading it, but to do firmware upgrades and things on uh, like that on this, then we can access that through here as well. So we can uh, disconnect the driver here, put the driver on there, and then we can talk directly to that module. We also have a heartbeat LED, uh, so our system tick, so that's brought out and that's on this line as well, and then of course our reset line. So <coughs> this particular board makes use of all of the full functionality that's provided um, with that connector. And this, the schematics for this and the uh, even the LAN patterns um, are all available uh, just to click away off the, the web page for this particular design. So all of that is open source for you. Okay. Now the Tag Connect, let's show off that. Get this out of the way. Let's grab, this is one of our dev boards and let's plug in our Tag Connect. So if you wanted to use the Tag Connect system, I'm not going to worry about, or maybe I will worry about polarity on this. So our pin one is there. So you'd plug this guy in there. Oop, like so. And there's actually two tag connections on here for different programming. Uh, let's plug into this one. This will power the board as well. So you can clip in there and you can see that this board is now running. So this is uh, providing that um, the power through the connectors there. So with the tag connect, this has one UART option. I guess we could plug in our UARTs as well. So of course you just plug in your USB cables, these are of course provided when you buy your kit. You've got power indicators on there as well, just like in our serial sniffer. So you've got those both available. So now we can do, uh, in this with this connector you've only got 10 pins, so we give up a few. So your reset line of course is there, that's part of the standard JTAG. And your JTAG programming lines. Uh, and then we bring out one UART pair as well. So that would come into uh, to this channel here that you could talk to that device. Okay. Then the last one, we'll bring in that board and we will find a cable. Actually, I've got this one connected already. So here is an example of how you use those power jumpers. Like so. So in this case, what we would need is to put that sense jumper in place. It should be off for the, uh, the other programmers. Uh, so that will feed back um, the, 
you know, a simulated device voltage uh, to the J-Link so it'll connect properly. And here we want to make sure that we connect uh, board power. So we've got the option of feeding that through on one of these. This board doesn't have a regulator so it is expecting just 3 volts in. Uh, that's how we've designed it. So we'd want to make sure that we pick the 3 volt line and there you go, you've got your power on there and of course you'd be able to do your full programming at that point. This does not bring out any UART connections, of course, it's only got <coughs> the two programming pins available so we just can't do that. Um, so if you had a debug output you would have to use uh, something else to access that. But overall, I hope that you can see that this is a pretty handy device. Uh, you're welcome to adopt our open source uh, connections uh, for here. Um, tag Connect is a, a standard connector so even if you've already got a Tag Connect system um, or footprints in place and you wanted that extra functionality uh, you can tap in that directly. We didn't change pinouts or anything like that. Um, and what you'll see, I hope, is that using this sort of system and, and being able to debug in a you know pretty small form factor um, program debug and have those serial port accesses gives you a lot of insight into the device you're running and, and like I said we developed this this has sort of evolved over many many devices and, and over many many years and we kept just adding on to it um, and enhancing the way that we can talk to our targets in a, in a single connector. It's great for production too, right? Uh, having a single connector where you can plug in, program, um, interact with the device over serial because you might be loading serial numbers or, or configurations and things like that. So having a single connection point like this or um, with the tag connect where you have at least one um, serial output, uh, then it's extremely valuable uh, as a production tool as well. So that's the Programmer Debugger Adapter. Horrible name, great device. I hope this will help you guys out one day. Take care.